Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are joining from. We are very delighted to have you on this Bank's Marketplace series of webinar. And uh, where we today plan to share some of the best use cases, you know, we are delivering in collaboration with our partners and TCS banks across banking, capital markets and insurance. Today we plan to uh, talk about some use cases uh, that boost digital engagement, loyalty and revenue, uh, specifically uh, on the area of, you know, uh, what is APAC banks doing in this uh, space. And, uh, you know, having said that, uh, uh, you know, you know, the challenge today is, you know, the value creation is no more happening inside the bank. The value creation has moved out of the internal value chain. And it's happening at the, as we call it, the business moments of the customer. And therefore, you know, banks who really need to find out where is the value creation and be there at that moment or of the customer's uh, point of context. Therefore, you know, it is very important that uh, banks take up the ability to work with ecosystem partners. And that's where ECS Bank's ecosystem as well as the marketplace provides an innovation hub for both fintechs and its customers and prospect banks with an ability to ideate and create cutting edge innovation. Today, you know, we want to talk about what we are working with Meniga to help banks bring fun in digital engagement and also how they can improve the uh, customer loyalty and also revenue in the process. With this, I would like to welcome Enrique, who is the head of sales for APAC region and, uh, you know, through us, help us with some insights into this. Uh, so, uh, thanks Enrique for joining this webinar and, uh, you know, with that, I would like to ask you, uh, where do you see uh, the pickup or the demand for digital banking and what do you see has changed in the last couple of years uh, where we have gone through this pandemic? And I'm sure there is a lot of digitization as uh, hype in the market, but what is your views? Over to you, Enrique. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Vijay. Thanks for the intro and, and thanks for uh, inviting Meniga. Um, so yes, you, you're absolutely right. Um, you know, we've been, uh, things are changing for the last two years. And, and one of the main reasons is the pandemic, right? The pandemic has changed a lot. Um, people have changed, uh, companies have changed, uh, governments have changed. Uh, and of course, uh, financial institutions are actually being challenged because all of those changes, right? Because of all of those changes. Um, and as a matter of fact, uh, at Meniga, we, we actually seen uh, already a lot of efforts uh, from, uh, you know, from the banking institutions to implement changes, right? Um, and let me let me share with you an interesting or some interesting findings uh, from a from a recent survey uh, by a large uh, bank um, and how relevant these uh, comments are uh, are for the banks. Uh, I think we have a slide. If we can if we, if we can bring that slide, uh, it's a survey that's, that touches on how the society or societies are actually changing in the way uh, they see the future of spending. Uh, and post COVID, okay, this is uh, on the context of uh, things that have changed post COVID. Uh, so we are clearly uh, heading towards a cashless society. There is no doubt about this, right? We're moving away from uh, cash payments. We're quickly shifting uh, from you know the traditional cash, uh, you know, carrying cash to online payments, contactless, uh, QR codes, uh, and many other uh, payment alternatives, right? Um, so people are actually, uh, have actually become uh, comfortable, uh, which is interesting. Uh, with uh, with a digital approach, right? We used to go and visit our banks in in the branches, and nowadays uh, we're very comfortable with uh, you know engaging with our cast with banks in in the in the apps, right? Uh, so you know, it's a lot of things that have changed uh, and have been uh, kind of uh, modified by the by the COVID uh, or the pandemic. Uh, and on top of that, if you think about the last five years, uh, there is the, the financial landscape uh, even before COVID. Uh, it's already been uh, disrupted, right? There is a lot of new players like the fintechs, the neo banks, the uh, the e wallets, the, the a ton of different players. That um, that uh, if you think about those new players, um, something that is very very relevant for them is that 
uh, the fact that these players are subject uh, to a much less uh, regulated uh, environment or regulation. And they actually partnering with companies uh, like uh, Meniga, with fintech companies like Meniga, uh, to launch a very fancy products in the market very quickly. Uh, so in summary, uh, you know, for the last two years or even more, three to four years, uh, but, but of, of course, because of COVID, our relationship with the banks and, and the banking landscape has changed a lot dramatically. And, and these changes require traditional banks uh, to rethink the way they approach uh, digital banking. Uh, so very, very, very exciting. Uh, but let me also ask you, Vijay, because you know, you from TCS, uh, you have a lot of insights from what your customers are telling you. So, so what do they tell you? Is it enough just to have a good digital, uh, a good digital channel? Uh, how do you guys uh, see what is happening from, from your side? Uh, thanks, Enrique. I think that was a nice way you summarized what has changed in the uh, post pandemic. And yes, I think I just, I don't know whether I have even a, any cash in my wallets nowadays. So, you know, these yeah. proliferation yeah. of digital payments is extremely high in India. And definitely I'm sure most of the APAC countries are in the same boat. But yes, to your question, you know, uh, I definitely don't think it is enough. Gone are the days when I and you were happy with a mobile app, which gave me my balances of account and probably, you know, uh, even if I take in the last couple of years where I'm still able to make some bill payments and the, you know, peer to peer payments and the speed of payments has increased. But uh, I think customers have moved beyond that and the expectations are only growing. And today, whatever I'm seeing is already passed. I mean, that's the speed at which change is taking. So uh, if I look at it, you know, we now are in a phase where we are asking banks to categorize our expenses and transactions as an example. We are asking them, help me with my budgets. Now I have five bank accounts, five mutual funds, five uh, stock trading or brooking accounts. Where are you going to help me create, bring them together? How are you going to help me even if to the extent of transactions within your bank, how are you helping me to control them, monitor them? You know, and therefore I believe there is a big role where banks can play in meeting these expectations by providing, you know, what we are doing together in personal finance management or in the case of a business banking, the, the business financial management. So I think beyond digital uh, channels, which are there, the world has moved. The expectations have only increased. And, you know, Absolutely. just to, sorry. Yeah. No, go ahead. Sorry, PJ. Yes. So, you know, and then what, do, what is it beyond digitization, right? If I say, okay, you digitized it, you gave me the control, everything is fine. But how is the bank able to move beyond seen as pushing products, right? Today, if you see uh, there are offers which comes to you, it becomes so irritating. You get SMS offers, email offers, and even within the app, you get push notifications. Is that engagement? I don't think because I, as a customer, you and me are kind of almost, uh, you know, we, do, we get irritated when we see there's a lot of push. And I think also what is critical? I mean, we have seen banks, you know, in our engagement, uh, when we are exposed to requirements, RFPs across the world. What is happening is today banks, or I would say rather the customers want their banks to be available when they need them. Gone are the days, definitely post pandemic, it has become a, a history today. You don't walk into a branch, that's over. But today there still is a disconnect, right? I need a loan when I'm buying a, let's say a television at a Walmart. Can you give me the finance then and there? That's where I think it's beyond, you know, trying to sell me products. How can you embed finance? And how can I, you know, as a case common to us between Miniga and TCS, can we embed finance in the journey of budgeting and planning? So basically, how can we embed as a, a, a positioning that you are available to provide banking services when they need it? And beyond that, how can you make the whole engagement with the customer fun, educative, right? Can that's I, mean, I as a customer, you know, I definitely would like to, sorry, Enrique. 
you know, I was just going to say, it, because you mentioned something that is super critical, uh, uh, creating a fun engagement, uh, uh, as you said, just a simple engagement is not enough. Uh, just having a, a basic conversation with my banks is not enough anymore. And, and that's what our bus banking customers actually are actually focus on, uh, on building what we say, what we consider a personalized but fun engagements, right? Uh, and let me give you an example. I think we have another slide uh, that we can bring uh, at some point. Um, as you mentioned, banks are no longer interested in just, you know, selling financial products. That, that's not enough. We, get that, we don't engage with banks in that way, right? Banks are interested in becoming um, financial partners, financial advisors. Um, and how do they achieve that? How do they connect with me as a customer, right, to achieve that? So uh, this is what Menik has learned for the last 10 years. Uh, think about Fitbit, Strava, Instagram, TikTok, uh, the Facebook, right? All these apps, they actually share um, the usage of, you know, some engages, engaging techniques uh, like the news feed, like the challenges, the gamifications, non-intrusive uh, actually notifications, right? We, we, we engage with, also with those apps in a very, very, uh, very intensive way in, in a way, right? So these are all proven uh, engagement techniques that actually we, uh, as, as Meniga, we always leverage as part of the implementations. And, and so what we do is we use the transaction data of the banks, of course, because this is uh, the real spending customer data. And Meniga comes up with, uh, with uh, smart insights based on analyzing that data. And then the banks use those engagement techniques to personalize uh, a conversation with, with me or with you. So if you are a person that uh, is often spending dining out, VJ, uh, the bank may be, uh, see that, may be able to see that thanks to analyzing the transaction data with Meniga and may be able to suggest a recommendation for you in terms of dining out or, or you know, you name it, depending on your spending habits, they will recommend you something versus something else, right? So it's a very personalized experience because you only receive that recommendation because you've been actually spending data on, on dining out. Right? So very critical, uh, the level of personalization that we can achieve with uh, with uh, with Meniga. And, and, you know, great Meniga customer examples uh, around around this type of personalization. Um, UOV, UOV uh, tomorrow app uh, that are launching in, launched in Singapore, Indonesia, Thailand, Vietnam, uh, or IDFC in, uh, back in India. Uh, these are banks that are having uh, digital conversations or with their customers through uh, fun, highly gamified uh, banking apps. Um, these banks are actually, by the way, doing very well because they target a younger generation or, you know, the young professionals, the YPs, the young professionals, families, the YPs, uh, or the millennials, right? Which is a huge segment in Asia. And this is what is relevant for, 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 for the banks in Asia. You have to look at those segments because there is big numbers uh, to be made uh, out of those, those segments. So it's not just about having a good channel, as you said, or a, a good uh, mobile app. It is truly about creating a, a, you know, banking gamifying experiences, if that makes sense, enabling users to to do things like creating budgets, uh, you know, take financial challenges, uh, saving goals, uh, you name it. A lot of things that are, are actually helping me as a customer, as a banking customer, not only to engage, but are helping me to, to become financially smarter. Uh, so my bank becomes my partner because it's helping me uh, to, to become really smart. So effectively, customers are incentivized uh, to save, for instance, money uh, by using a, a gamify banking experience, which is great. Uh, it's, a, it's a very uh, non-frictional way to, to do it, right? And, and just to, to finish with a, a, another, another, another final thought on this, since uh, sustainability and caring about uh, our planet or our environment is a really, really, really hot topic at the moment, uh, many of our banks actually are also asking Meniga, are also asking us uh, to help them engage uh, in, in engage with their customers in the sustainability banking conversation or in the sustainability banking in sustainability bank conversations. Uh, a couple of years ago, Meniga actually launched a, a, a specific product that allows banks to to um, you know to create those conversations uh, to track the carbon footprint of the of the customers and to help them. Uh, learning uh, how they can be more sustainable or how they can minimize or even offset uh, their actually carbon footprint. So this is a very, very modern uh, way of, this, of, of engagement 
uh, a lot of interest in specifically in Asia uh, for Meniga Carbon Solution uh, because it's an area that if you if you really think about it, uh, no bank can miss because of these segments, the millennials, the uh, the young professionals. They care about this topic. They care about sustainability. And what happens is you don't do it as a bank. These guys will definitely change banks and they will go to another one that is actually uh, helping them uh, to become more sustainable. So a lot of things around uh, the whole, uh, you know, engagement and new models uh, or new ways of engagement as well with, with sustainability. Um, but uh, let me uh, pass, it you to, pass it back to you, um, Vijay. I think uh, since we are talking about sustainability, uh, maybe we should ask, uh, ask the audience uh, for, uh, for a quick poll, uh, just to see what the audience think about uh, banking and sustainability, right? Um, yes, a, a simple question. Uh, what would you like uh, uh, your bank to help you with uh, to be more sustainable? Oh, sorry, would you like your bank to, to help you to be more sustainable? That would be a question. And I think a couple of answers or three answers. Uh, yes, I would like my bank to help me understanding how green I am, or I would like my bank to help me reducing my carbon footprint. It's, it's even one step ahead. Or no, I don't really care about this. I'm not interested in, in becoming uh, more sustainable. So maybe a few seconds uh, in here uh, to see if the audience uh, can actually uh, give us a response so we can sense uh, the type of audience we have, right? We have people from different countries. Uh, maybe depending on the country, there is different interests. Uh, let's see Let's see what the results are. Vijay. Uh, yeah, I think that's one area definitely, at least my bank doesn't offer me a choice, you know, of deciding or even understanding what's my carbon footprint like, right? I'm very interested yes. because I heard somewhere I, when I was talking to another uh, firm uh, in UK, you know, uh, they are trying to, I mean, a bank in UK, basically, they're trying to bring some kind of a feature in the app where, you know, the customer can actually know if he's spending in Walmart, what is the impact on a carbon footprint? And, and if he does not go and dine out, rather eats at home, what's the change? I think that's definitely a uh, uh, thing, I think, especially post pandemic, there is an interest in that. And uh, I know Miniga has got those features, but let's see what the audience feels on the importance. Very relevant. Let me ask you, Vijay, while we wait for the uh, for the uh, for the actual responses. Um, uh, in terms of uh, TCS, right? Um, you help in you help in a lot of banks as well, and common common uh, customers, as you know, we have. Um, how do you guys uh, position yourself to address, or how do you help banks to address these challenges, right? Uh, in a, in such a short time frame, because a fintech company may be launching a product in, in you know in three months. How do you help a bank to to you know kind of uh, be as fast as 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 the other uh, you know players? And how important is and this is where we've been working together, right, with with the ecosystem. How important uh, an ecosystem is for such a dynamic environment, right, which is like uh, the fintech uh, uh, right now? Uh, can 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 I pick your brain on that? Can you share uh, how? What are your thoughts on that? Sure, uh, but just let's see if the poll results are out before I jump into that. I think, no, not yet. I think there may be answer, so we can post the results and maybe. Uh, yeah, uh, pause for the results. Yeah. You want to continue uh, and then we talk about the results at the end uh, with the Q&A, um, uh, Vijay? Yeah, we can, that... we can do that. So, uh, Enrique, sorry. Right. Yeah. So, Enrique, that's a nice question. And I think that's what the crux of the ecosystem and the marketplace, which uh, DCS Banks uh, has invested in and is running it. So, you know, uh, as I said earlier, collaboration is uh, is a need now. Gone are the days where you built everything and you wanted to specialize in everything. So today, what do we do in TCS uh, banks? You know, we are very clear there are competencies we want to focus and grow in. But when it comes to helping a customer uh, do more than simple banking, we also would like to bring collaboration to the table, right? And that's where, you know, both sides, there is a, uh, the importance of collaboration is definitely uh, understood. 
and the need to have an ecosystem is also very clear. I think what we are doing, of course, banks are also investing in ecosystem, but what TCS Bank's uh, ecosystem helps you to, uh, the fintech especially is, you know, we are providing A, the right white spaces in a banking domain or even in a capital market or an insurance domain. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we are ourselves investing in a framework which helps to identify innovations as well as fintechs and insurtechs who can bring value and add value to the existing banking value chain. And then, you know, we curate those uh, fintechs, we evaluate them, we invest time into understanding what they are bringing and then create that overall value proposition beyond banking. What is it we can do? So if you see, you know, uh, about four years to five years back when we started working with Miniga, right? But this is the journey we have passed through. We knew PFM was very important and we started, you know, early on we discussed engagement with Miniga. And of course, early days we were more focused on use cases. Then, you know, we uh, invested time into identifying and integrating those use cases. And then now we are, you know, already implemented and we have uh, live clients. And here we are talking today of propagating the concept so that banks who have still not embarked on this journey can look at what we have done and take cues or even come to us and we can help them uh, do this, you know. Totally. So I think this is the value which uh, uh, the ecosystem provides, yeah. Ecosystem and, and, and a proof of that is, as you mentioned, right, uh, joint customers that have been able to not only to leverage Maniga or TCS individually as, as companies, right, or, or the solutions, but also the progress we've made uh, before, uh, yes, between yeah. us to, you know, creating uh, this uh, ecosystem or, or, or putting ourselves in the ecosystem so they can actually deliver fast, faster uh, and, and, you know, in, in a much more timely manner. So. Uh, fantastic! Uh, great, uh, great, uh, great! Great! Um, great! You know, great to be part of this ecosystem. Uh, this is only uh, two, it's been two years, as you said, but this is only the beginning, right? Uh, this is never going to stop here, and there is many, many more, uh, many more uh, success stories to to, to come. Um, so, I think um, uh, if you don't mind, uh, I just saw the uh, the um, the all uh, results and I wanted to take this opportunity because I am amazed. Uh, so zero percent of the people said they don't care about sustainability, which is great. I mean, we love it. Um, this is absolutely what we want to see. We care about the planet, right? This is we're moving away from, you know, being totally uh, unresponsible uh, and we are actually conscious now. So so great response. Zero percent of people actually in the audience uh, don't care about sustainability. And interestingly enough, the other two the other two answers, one is 58 uh, percent. People would like their bank to to help and to reduce the carbon footprint. Uh, and then the other 31 percent is uh, they at the, the sustainability journey that Meniga has with other banks. And, and let me just uh, add a bit on, on that on, on, since these answers are so relevant. This is exactly what we what we see in, in with other customers. A lot of people want to be educated. Okay, the first thing what we need is to educate them. So our tool allows them to learn. Okay, I am being a bit and green. I am being very, and then once they learn how good or how bad they are, they actually want to reduce it. So they want their bank uh, to 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 help them reducing it. And this is exactly the same as what we were mentioning before. With the bank can challenge me as a user to say, hey, how about reducing your carbon footprint um, next week or next month? How about taking public transport instead of driving, uh, you know, four hundred dollars of petrol. So very simple, uh, very simple recommendations and, and challenges that I can receive from my bank will actually help me uh, to to not only to understand how green I am, but also how can I reduce my footprint. So non-intrusive ways of of engage with with banking customers using sustainability. So very very powerful the results of this uh, uh, survey that we just displayed you know, on on the online. Um, so great, great results. Uh, uh, back to you, Vijay. Yeah, I think I'm, I, as you said, it validates our, uh, at least as I was saying, I personally would like my bank to offer me something where I can see what my carbon footprint is and definitely beyond showing me, also help me uh, 
uh, improve my carbon footprint or reduce my carbon footprint, right? We have to talk to your bank. I don't know who your bank is, but uh, we'll have to talk to you offline about your bank and I'll, I'll approach them. We'll have to talk to them, definitely, yeah. <laughs> So, but continuing on the uh, continuing on the point I was making on the ecosystem, right? Uh, I think you know, in addition to uh, participating or being a part of the ecosystem, what we have also brought today is the marketplace. And as I said earlier, you know, the marketplace is an incubation hub for our partners. And I would uh, like to call out, you know, again what we have done uh, on the marketplace together with Miniga, right? But before that, you know, uh, what this marketplace offers is the domain sandboxes, you know, and uh, we offer sandboxes across banking, payments, lending, insurance, wealth, plus, you know, uh, partner sandboxes, like, uh, and also the APIs are published on the marketplace. So happy to say, you know, Enrique, we have got more than 20 APIs of Maniga published and therefore the any any bank which wants to test uh, the PFM use cases or carbon footprint use cases then definitely request access and they can do that. And already you know uh, some banks have tested uh, use cases uh, by requesting a dev access and they have done this. So I think that's the that's the benefit of the marketplace where uh, banks are having, as I said, access to a very curated set of partners and many of these partners have also provisioned sandboxes and APIs are available. So, Fantastic. Yeah. so with that, you know, I would probably ask you, uh, you know, Enrique, what do you see as a benefit of so far the collaboration with uh, TCS? Where do you see this relationship and what do you, any comments? Oh, I think it's I think it's a, a bit of what we've already mentioned, right? Um, speak to market. This is this is what everybody wants, right? Uh, banks have been challenged by new companies that are able to launch uh, something in months, uh, literally two months. Uh, talk to the latest neo bank, right? They will launch a product in less than two months, right? Um, and they need to react. They need to be as fast as that. So uh, this is one of the you know greatest benefits of of being a part of the ecosystem, right? Uh, the bank can actually leverage uh, our collaboration and, you know, take uh, whatever we've, we've put out there and use it uh, without, you know, having to start from scratch. So there is a, a lot of speed to market that brings out uh, the ecosystem. And of course, you know, you also leveraging the, the, you know, the collaboration of two very important uh, or very, you know, relevant companies, right? TCS uh, in, in the banking space is, is you know, absolutely uh, no question of your guys, your experience. You've been doing this for many years, many, many banks uh, around the world. And Meniga, Meniga has been, uh, Meniga was born more than 10 years ago. We've got more than 30 uh, customers in 30 plus countries. And, you know, it's great because what we've done in other countries or in other customers can be also leveraged uh, as you do, right? Can be also leveraged in, in, a, in a new, in a new bank, so I think there is a bit of of speed and speed and also the maturity of our relationship and also the experience of our company spring. So um, a lot to be a lot to be leveraged. To be brutally honest, if, if, if that makes absolutely, sense. and I think banks in Asia Pacific definitely should look at this ecosystem and the sandbox what we have provided. But I'm sure uh, they could always reach out to us to see what solutions we bring on the table for unfilled digital engagements with responsibility by contributing to sustainability, right? So I think uh, with that, uh, let's move to the next slide. And, and I think we had a great discussion, uh, Enrique. And there are a lot of takeaways and also the audience poll definitely shows a great interest and ask from the banks for contributing to sustainability. But, uh, mm -hmm. And I think uh, the value uh, which uh, the joint use cases we elaborated is a huge benefit for banks to uh, come forward and we would definitely like to collaborate with them and help them on this journey. And the other takeaway which I definitely heard was, uh, of course, from the audience, the confirmation of sustainability and go green. They want banks to help them, not only help them, but also, you know, definitely bring those features. Again, uh, 
Uh, the, the need, right? What we discussed, the, the need to, in this case, sustainability, as, as the audience uh, just mentioned, how relevant this is. Everybody wants to, to, to talk about this, to, to be engaged on, on that on that conversation. But also the other thing that you mentioned at the beginning, right? Banks have to move away from the product selling approach and they have to engage in a, in a ways, uh, in very modern ways. Uh, and this is not a static anymore. This is a, a dynamic conversation. This has to be personalized. It has to be totally based on who I am, not on how many, how old I am, or where do I live, or just based on on. So there is a, a lot of a lot of uh, uh, a lot of areas of improvement uh, for uh, the modern banks, and and this is what we're seeing. And 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 you know, it's great that we can actually share it uh, as a as a key takeaways. Um, if if you if you think uh, is a Sit yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, I just wanted to add a couple of points, you know, or something I missed telling, you know, we didn't speak about the feed feature in Maniga app, right? And definitely, you know, I have seen, uh, just to add on the engagement aspect, how do you mm -hmm. keep, so today, you know, engagement is broken. You sometimes talk to the customer when you send him a SMS informing him of a transaction or sometimes pushing an offer. But I think the feed feature on the app is something where it's like continuously you are uh, engaged with the customer and it's just not a notification, but it prompts, you know, the bank, right. the customer to actually, if there is a spend notification, you also bring a challenge. Do you want to reduce this spend next time? It's actually a very effective, uh, VJ, if, if you don't mind me saying this, if you think about the, well, I mentioned, right, the Facebook, right, or the Instagram, people just, you know, go through a feed, a news feed, and, and that's very, we, we, it's not for us, we do that. So we took the same approach at Meniga. We, we, every customer we, we go to, we tell them, you want to take this approach because this is actually very valid and it works very well. So exactly, you, 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 it's almost like you're not looking at your bank, you're looking at a, a news feed uh, that sometimes has transaction information, information, sometimes has a recommendation, sometimes it has a summary of your spending, sometimes you have the carbon footprint of a, so it's a very, very, very engaging and for people, you know, without knowing it or because we're used to it, uh, like we are used to the Instagrams or, or, the, or the Facebook, we use the same newsfeed and, and it is very, very effective. Banks love it because it brings a level of engagement uh, with their customers that is, is absolutely, uh, absolutely uh, stunning compared with what they used to do, right, in, in the old days with the banking apps. So, yeah, fair, fair point, very fair point to bring it uh, and, and to... Remind us. Um, I guess uh, we we just looking at the uh, the um, kind of the plan. So um, how should we do it? Do we do we so we take uh, some questions from from the audience? Uh, uh, Vijay, I mean, is what what is the uh, how do you want to play yeah, this? I think, yeah, I think let's take a pause and look at questions and yeah. Definitely. Okay. Um, I think this is going to be for me. What are the benefits for a bank to launch a sustainable product like Carbon Tracker or Offsetting? So multiple things. Okay. I'm going to try to be brief, but uh, not, not to go too long. But first of all, uh, the fact that you are talking to me, let's say that I am a sustainable person, right? A sustainable customer. You're talking to me uh, about something that I care. And guess what? What is the consequence of that? I am engaging in my app. I am spending more time in my app. So the bank actually, the engagement uh, with the banking app actually increases, okay? Just by talking to the right person about the right topic, you get a better engagement. And not only that, I'll give you another example that is actually uh, fascinating, and a lot of banks are looking at this. Uh, because I care about sustainability, because I am engaging in those conversations about carbon footprint, my carbon, my, my, my footprint, my tracker, my bank actually knows that I care about sustainability. And guess what? If they recommend me tomorrow to apply for a green credit card, I will probably consider that credit card because it totally matches with my personality. Versus in the old days, uh, a lot of green credit cards were offered to people that don't care about uh, green, uh, green planet sustainability. So guess what? None of those credit cards actually were accepted. Those offers were just absolutely invalid versus talking to a person that does care about sustainability. So the bank actually can make a lot of money by upselling, cross-selling uh, green products because the target audience is very well segmented. Uh, so that's that's one of the, the benefits, uh, Vijay. 
I think just to add to what you said, Enrique, I think even today, you know, ESG as a uh, as a requirement is only increasing, and I'm I would say that you know that is environment, social, and governance, right? So somewhere I think institutions will also start uh, you know complying with this, and mm. effectively they will pass it down to to their own employees and customers. So if if you take banks, customers, I'm sure when they start complying, they would also help their customers to comply. So this is something going to stay and it's only going to increase whether we think it will be happening in the next few quarters or weeks or years, but it's, it's, it's only the beginning. Yeah. There is a question for you, Vijay, if uh, I'm going to read it, um, um, for me, you, you, Vijay. have traditional banks uh, in the APAC uh, begun adopting uh, PFM as part of the digital uh, banking roadmap? Uh, this is for you. I, I can, I can, I'm sure you have a good answer for this. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. And I think, uh, you know, I would say, of course, the new Neo Challenger banks are launching with such features on day one. But uh, having said that, traditional banks are not at all left behind. And as we took a couple of examples, you know, Enrique, there are already banks who are doing very well in this space. Of course, they have started small in terms of expense categorization. So today, if you see most banks in APAC would offer expense categorization at the minimum in terms of the journey towards personal financial management. But beyond that, uh, I would say increasingly an ability to also self categorize, then moving into creation of budgets and also planning are definitely there. Uh, for for reasons of India, I'm not able to take the names, but there are many customers of TCS banks who are already on this journey and are offering these features. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I even, I, I even uh, if, I, if you let me add something, I even call PFM old fashioned, if that makes sense, because PFM is something we've been doing for quite a while together, actually. Uh, and, and this is the next level is Customer engagement, of course, customer engagement uses the foundation of the PFM, of the categorization, the data uh, and reach. Uh, but this is the next level. This is a lot of, and, and I'll take it to, to you know, to, to the, the question is, a lot of banks are, are not only thinking about what they used to be considered PFM, they used, they're just thinking about the next level, the, 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 the engagement, the improving the engagement using uh, all the customer data. So. So, um, but you know, I just want to add on that part, you know, on the engagement part, whatever we spoke of continuous engagement, like a Twitter or a Facebook or the LinkedIn, as you see, it's real time. It keeps on changing, right? I think banks are not yet there, but definitely I would be happy to see some banks really looking at that as an initiative. Probably I think while the capability is there between us as a solution to take between TCS banks and eager to offer such a solution but yeah. i would say there is a lot more uh, demand to be there come from the bank side of it that's something which banks can definitely yeah. do that. And, 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 and this is linked is with the beginning of the uh, discussion where we are saying uh, you know a lot of banks have to do something because all these neo banks neo banks they challenge them they, they so they have to evolve and take this to the next level right they know they're yet and, and that's exactly what is happening in asia that's what we're seeing we we're talking to multiple countries multiple banks multiple entities that are actually uh you know trying to take it to the next level because otherwise the neo banks or the new digital challenges are going to eat the pipe so absolutely um looking at the questions uh, uh maybe another one that i can take uh just the, uh, the fact that the demand for carbon initiatives in APAC, um, in APAC banks. Uh, this is an interesting one. It's a very good question because what happens is um, we, depending on the country, this is very much a per country, uh, depending on the country and often depends on the level of regulation that the government is pushing or the level of, depending on the different countries, we see a different level of interest in ESG and, and carbon uh, and carbon initiatives. Uh, for instance, Singapore is a, Singapore is a massive, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very advanced country in many things, and sustainability is one of them, right? So they've been pursuing sustainability banking for a while. They've even provided with grants to, to the banks to, to implement such a project. Uh, 
versus other countries, I don't want to name any country particularly, that they may not care that much about sustainability yet. They, they are in, in another phase and they will be in the next maybe two to three years, but they, they are. So it is very much per country. Uh, it's a different pace per country. But uh, what we see is definitely a trend across all Asia and, and APAC uh, for sure. Thanks, Enrique. Um, I think there is another question for you. I mean, how, what do you think is the go to market or sorry, a time to uh, time to market for launching an initiative like a carbon initiative and or a actually, GFM? How, how long have you seen banks doing it from scratch to? So uh, this is difficult. It's a tricky question because depending on if you're talking to a new bank that has no legacy, you talk to an old bank that has a lot of legacy, then there is always a, you know, the tricky part, the, tri the, the details, the evidence in the details, right? Um, but uh, for instance, Carbon, which is a very, um, very crucial uh, initiative right now for a lot of banks, we actually seen uh, uh, customers uh, launching uh, a first phase of a Carbon implementation in, you know, anywhere in between uh, eight to 12 weeks. As I said, this depending on the bank and depending how how we are, uh, what what is in place. But that's pretty aggressive, actually, if you are able to to launch something in 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 such a time frame. Um, you know, this is as I said, we have to uh, see what what type of systems you have, what type of implementations or integrations. But uh, it can be quite actually quite quite fast, and and it needs to be like that because otherwise uh, banks will not do it. As simple as that. Uh, so so. Successful and, and fast can be done. Thanks, Enrique. I think, yeah, I mean, if it's only a pure uh, carbon initiative to be added on to the app, definitely I agree. But uh, banks who are looking at completely onboarding to a journey of transformation where they have nothing but the traditional app, I think there'll be some more time in terms of understanding the data, integrating the data, and, you know, categorizing the data. Again, that's a function of what uh, maturity the market provides you in terms of categorization. You know, as an yeah. example, you may go and buy a yacht and a packet of milk from Walmart, he gives you one bill. <laughs> so how do you categorize? So, those anyway are challenges which we have to work, but I guess, and with that, I think there's another question. How can a bank use the TCS Bank's marketplace effectively? I think probably I will take it first and Enrique, you can add your experience and say how you can help the banks also. Of course, you know, as I said earlier, the bank's marketplace brings together fintechs, their sandboxes and APIs. Plus, TCS Bank's solutions in banking, capital markets, insurance, the relevant sandboxes, and the APIs. So today, you know, there are more than 1,500 APIs on the marketplace. So what, what, what is available today is the ingredients. Now it's up to the bank, which wants to cook a dish. They can just come and tell us what they want to do. And as a team between us and the partners like Meniga, we are here available. They could always reach out to us. Again, having said that there is a set of partners, but if the bank has an idea and wants a test bed to ideate and innovate, we provide the marketplace as a test bed, right? That's where the sandbox and the APIs and the developer portal comes to help. So I think there are a lot of use cases and uh, I don't want to restrict by saying this is what it is. If any bank is interested, definitely happy to understand. Please reach out to us. We would be uh, more than happy to talk to you and see how we can help. Uh, Enrique, you want to add anything from your experience? You know, I was just going to say, this is a fantastic way to wrap up, right? Uh, you know, by leveraging, you know, uh, that question that specifically touches on you guys and us and, and how a bank could leverage, uh, you know, this relationship. You said it, you said it all. And, and you know, there is a lot of, there is a lot of things to be benefiting from, uh, you know, and, and, you know, we're here for that. And if there is, a, there is, a, there is somebody out there that is interested in exploring a bit more, uh, how we can do it uh, very happy to to you know have a a, a, a follow-up conversation um, okay thanks Andrew. okay if there are i think there are no other questions probably uh, we should uh, wrap up uh, so i think it was a very interesting session and a lot of uh, questions from the audience and uh, i think a lot of takeaways for but for me you know if i were to uh, wrap up with the two key takeaways for me is one, I think uh, 
uh, audience is interested in uh, carbon initiatives, sustainability and go green and banks yes. are still not there. And number two for me, engagement is still, uh, you know, erratic, I would say, not continuous, smooth and flow. So there is a lot which, uh, you know, TCS banks and Miniga solutions can help banks. Uh, that's my take. Enrique, you want to summarize your... One, one thing, away, which is kind of the, the highlight of, of the, the title of the session. Um, there is a lot to be done in Asia and, and we're here to help. And, and if you guys want to do what the more advanced banks are doing, uh, let's do it together. It's possible and, and we can help. So thanks very much, uh, Vijay, for, for having us and, and you know, pleasure, pleasure to be here. Thank you, Enrique. Same here. Thank you. And thanks to the audience for the deep engagement they showed and the questions they asked. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Yeah.